It's so good to be with you every Monday night. I thank you so much. And I want to thank all my prayer warriors, over 600 prayer warriors out there that pray for us, for the ministry, for this show. And you know what? You don't have to do that. That's why I thank God for you. And I love you. And I, and I really, I, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you, prayer warriors. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, supporters, people that have given some donations and really helped us out financially. I, I know every person that does it. Please uh, text evangelist to 71777 or go to lastevangelist.com. Let's get the rest of that money for last evangelist. So we we got to blow net. We Look, we can't keep doing what we're doing, okay? we This is not acceptable. We're going after the culprit, and we're going to not just go after things. I don't like, you know, Christians that just do witch hunts and go after people. When I say witch hunts, I mean, this is a real witch. I want a Christian to give me a solution. And that's what we're doing here. We're not just identifying it and going after it. We're bringing to you, to the children of God, programming the truth, even though it's not the money that Netflix has, but we're doing the best we can. So I really appreciate your support. Okay, my next guest, uh, it's a gentleman who has dedicated his life to uh, helping children in a way of identifying the demons that are coming after their little minds. Uh, he doesn't have to do it, but he's doing it. I've spoken to him at length on the phone. He has a heart for God. He's a real Christian, has a family of his own, uh, and he's going to give us some information. I promise you, it's going to shock you. Alexander Bell. Alexander, are you there with me, buddy? I certainly am, David. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks for being with me. Um, Alexander, now, I want to tell the people, you and I have a new show that's coming out on David Havener TV. It's, uh, it, it's the proof of Satan and how he's actually coming after the minds of children through the media. And it's, we're going to break it up into a four-part series. So I want to tell the people it's going to be only exclusive on David Havener TV. Um, but we're going to talk about some of the things on that show here tonight. And you've got... You've got some things you want to say, and the first show that you're going to bring up is a children's show about zombies. Yeah, so basically it's, um, it's a children's cartoon, and it's also a, a series of children's books. And then they turn, they turn this into a series of dolls for little girls to play with, and it's called Once Upon a Zombie. So um, if you remember all, your, all the famous characters from children's um, books, Rapunzel, Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. What they've done, they've turned something kind of special and beautiful into something dark and sinister. So they've basically turned these characters into zombies and just injected a lot of darkness, a lot of evil, a lot of fear into something which, of course, was originally beautiful and innocent and pure and which should be that way. So it's basically just kind of polluting something which is very pure and beautiful so that kids, kids are used to this darker, darker, um, how can I put it, this darker representation of, of what should be pure and innocent, you know? So I don't know if yeah. you can see the photo on the screen. Um, yeah, yeah, we see it. So, uh, Alexander, is what station airs Once Upon a Zombie? Who, who airs this? You know, I don't actually know that because I, I didn't realize until recently that it was actually a TV program. I knew, it was, I knew there were books. There were okay, two well, books. Okay, we'll, we'll find out who's airing that. Uh, okay, yeah. Once Upon a Zombie, a child's cartoon. It's about zombies. It's about death. It's about people, yeah. you know, walking around dead. Um, yeah. Okay, what, what's the next, um, the next show that, that you've got there? Um, this is called The Last Kids on Earth. And again, this started off as like uh, books for young children. But this is on Netflix, The Last Kids on Earth. And it's really important to point out that I didn't go looking for these. I just typed in uh, kids programs on Netflix and Netflix recommended these programs, uh, the ones I'm gonna talk about. They a actively recommended that I show them to my kids. So these are the top picks from Netflix that I show my kids. And so The Last Kids on Earth is ba basically the zombie apocalypse where um, basically there's three or four children left and everywhere they turn there are zombies there is blood, there is gore, they're being chased. And of course, this is just a cartoon, so it's, they, they make you think it's um, appropriate for your young children because it's just a cartoon and there's a bit of humor. 
but really it's um, the idea of blood and um, you know hacking hacking zombies apart with machetes. It's you know it's kind of it's selling this idea to children that gore is exciting and also that the idea that hacking hacking away and beating beating other creatures to death is fun. You know because they're zombies, so it's okay because they're zombies. They deserve it, you know, and this is very worrying. Right, right. Now, there's something going on with zombies. You see, my philosophy on zombies is the reason, and I'm going back to The Walking <laughs> Dead, why it's so popular and they're pumping it into our brains, is they yeah. want us to be zombies. You see, if life is not valuable, number one, then it's easy to shoot somebody walking around and blow their head off, okay? <laughs> number two is a zombie tells you that you're always going to come back to life, you see. In other words, it defies everything that Christ talked about, all right? And this, the fact they're bringing it to children now, I think is very strategic of the evil one, of the Antichrist. What do you, what do you think? Well, I've also noticed a very um, interesting pattern with the zombies, is that... Um, you may have heard of the children's game Fortnite. It's one of the most popular video games. In fact, it's right. the most popular video game on the planet. And it's um, you know, promoted to young children. And that's a zombie apocalypse game as well. And what I've noticed with, um, with the zombies and the children is that the children are kind of being told they're the ones to save the world. So it's, it's almost like children against the world. And so I'm, I'm seeing this pattern in other places as well, where children are being pitted against the adults. So it's driving this, this wedge between the young and the old. And so the children are the ones who are going to make everything better and save the world against all the, all the uh, zombies. And, and they're kind of often portraying the zombies as the older people, the adults. Wow. So this Does that make sense? Very, very interesting, uh, Alexander, because I think I hear what you're saying. Matthew 24 talks about father against son, about you know, yeah. parents against their children. It's... It's a way to divide the families, as Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, right? Yeah, and also, um, I think it's Isaiah 3.12 says, uh, As for my people, children will be their oppressors, and women will be their rulers. And, um, and I'm seeing a lot of this in many other areas. It's not just uh, in, um, in children's programming, but I'm seeing this, uh, how this could you know, come about. And... Um, so, yes, it's, it's, coming, it's happening on our screen. Wow. Well, let's do one more. And, again, this is coming from our new series. It's coming on David Hebner TV. Uh, uh, it's proof that Satan is coming after the minds of the children. But let's go for one more, Alexander. What's, what's the next? Do you have another? Uh... I, I think the most important one to share is, is called The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. <clears throat> and that's on Netflix. And this is a program aimed, aimed at teenage girls, so, you know, anywhere from 13 onwards, but young teenage girls, and basically it's, it's a full-on satanic program. There's nothing is hidden. There's no disguise that it's about Satan. It's about a young girl who has to choose um, whether she wants to, uh, um, what's the word, join with the Dark Lord on her 16th birthday, because her family are all witches and they all love Satan. They all say, praise Satan when something good happens. And they're all, there's, it's basically, a, it's like a, it's an advert for Satan. You know, the whole program, Satan's name is mentioned throughout. It's, there is um, uh, cannibalism in the program. There is... Cannib excuse me, cannibalism, cannibalism in the program? Yes, yeah, it's, it's mentioned frequently and you see, you see images of um, children, children which have been cooked like pigs. It's, it's, it's no holds barred from Netflix. They've gone full out on this one. To really, what they're doing is they're, they're selling Satanism to the kids. What they're doing, they're marketing it. They're marketing Satanism as kind yeah. of cool, edgy, dark, and they're selling it to young girls as a way of like, self-empowerment. So it's about, you know, Satanism, witchcraft will empower the young women against the oppressive men. And so this program is, is unbelievable. You, you even, I can't even believe it exists. The fact that it's, it's there is just yeah. mind, mind blowing. Yeah. And you know what blows my mind even more is that Christians mm -hmm. aren't talking about this. Uh, yeah. Alexander, it, there, there just shouldn't be a preacher this coming Sunday in the pulpit 
that shouldn't be getting up and the first words that come out of their mouth is disconnect Netflix. Let me tell you about the shows that they have. In other words, the things that you're talking about, pastors should be talking about in the pulpit. Don't you agree? There should be uproar. The, the, fact, the fact that Satanism is being uh, encouraged and promoted and, and sold on, on, on public television, it should be everywhere. It, should be, uh, it just goes to show you, you know, that it's, um, people don't want to say anything. Uh, absolutely. Some, um, some, people, I wonder, some people don't want to say anything. Yeah. I, want to read I want to say a little bit. I want to read a scripture, and I want to get your opinion on this scripture, okay? Okay. Luke 16, 13 through 15. Luke 16, 13 through 15. Now, as I read this, I want to apply it to the things we've been talking about tonight, gatherers. I want you to, to be with me on this, please, as we pray that the Holy Spirit guides us through this. But it says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 14, And the Pharisees also were covetous, heard all these things, they derided him, they did not like him. And he said to them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your heart, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So, why did I read the scripture? I want to point a couple of things out. Number one, verse 13 says, you can't serve two masters. Do you agree or do you have any thoughts on this as to we cannot watch this type programming because that is one master? We can't watch Absolutely. that and yet go to church on Sunday and serve the God of heaven? Do you Absolutely. And I totally agree. And the, well, the one thing that jumped to my mind when you said that is that, um, that we are to p pursue the fruits of the spirit, not the fruits of the flesh. And so thing, things that Netflix is pumping out, that it's for the flesh. You know, it's for the part of the human being that likes, likes sin, likes darkness, likes indulgence, right. likes watching people... Um, indulge and be in pain and it's it's flesh you know and so that's the two masters it's either the fruits of the spirit or the fruits of the flesh and we we need to pursue the fruits of the spirit obviously right but see i people come to me and go david i don't want to disconnect netflix because i get my cooking shows uh, or i get <laughs> yeah. my, you know i get it. it's a good there's other good shows on netflix you know even good children's shows but the problem is you can't serve two masters. If you know yeah. that there's child pornography and you know that the, the son of hell, the, the, the father of hell is in Netflix, how can you yeah. add that with God, right? You can't Absolutely. Serve. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. You know, it's the first thing that anyone should do. If they, know, if they hear this information right now, they should immediately go and cancel Netflix and also look into all the other uh, platforms which are putting out similar information and never look at them again. Disconnect uh, them, and, uh, you know. And there's so many, Alexander, we don't want to get into that now, but I have a feeling yeah. we're going to do a show on that one, one day. There's so many yeah. other platforms, people don't have any clue of how the devil's operating. Uh, verse yeah. 14, the Pharisees said that uh, they were covetous. They heard these things and they derided him. They did not like Jesus. You see, the evil one doesn't like it when we stand up and we tell the truth you have to you can't serve two masters when you start yeah. saying that the evil one stands up and they come against us but listen to this verse 15 he said to them ye are which justify yourselves before men but god knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of god this to me tells me that all these shows that's highly esteemed uh, yeah. uh, uh, among men is an abomination to God. And do you know how many Christians, Alexander, are watching this stuff thinking, well, they're just brain dead? Uh, yeah, they, they think that it's permissible. They, 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 uh, their standards are very low. Yeah, and, and I know that Jesus, that the context of this, it was talking about religion. But you see, God has a char God doesn't change character. If God looks yeah. at this in religion, he's going to look at media the same way. 
because his principles always stand, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, before we go, is there anything else you'd like to say? Because I'm going to have you back on next week so we can, yeah. I, I want to I want to continue on with this because you have a lot more to share. Uh, yeah. But is there one last thing you'd like to say before we wrap it up? Well, just to anyone who's listening, and um, obviously over the course of the next week, they're going to be watching television. They're going to be um, watching YouTube. And, you know, when, when something dark appears, something negative, something with, you know, um, something which doesn't feel right, switch it off. You know, you don't, don't, have to, you don't have to spend your time absorbing this information. So I just think it's important people are disciplined with what they put into their brain, that they only put positive, positive messages, positive images, positive, positive information, because it's very detrimental to the soul to absorb this dark, dark information. So I just want to encourage people to, uh, to put that into practice over the next week. A amen. Thank you so much, Alexander Bell. Uh, you have a website. Would you give your website out to everyone? Yes, it's just alexanderbell.org. So okay. it's quite simple, alexanderbell.org. Yeah, the, the man is a good writer. He loves people. He loves God, and he's dedicating his life to helping children. Alexander, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Likewise, David. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. We've got a show coming out on David Heavener TV. It's going to be exclusive. I've seen a lot of his work. I love it. I'm going to wrap it up in some other things that I'm doing, and we're going to present it as a four-part series on David Heavener TV. Uh, David Heavener TV. Go and sign up. Uh, it's just four dollars and ninety-nine cents a month. Uh, disconnect Netflix. You got to do that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'd love being with you guys every week and we keep running out of time and I just hate this because it's, uh, I love you guys and I feel like I could spend the whole night here. Uh, my wife wouldn't like that because she doesn't want to sit in this hot room that long. But Shanita, um, we have a praise report. Linda says, I watch your YouTube show about Fukushima dead zone. First, I'd like to thank you and your guest, uh, Dr. Jan Mensik for actually talking so openly about Fukushima issues. I used to live on the Oregon coast and decided to move away because of what was happening in Japan. I'm glad I was able to get away. Uh, I'd like to talk with someone in the group sometime on your, about your YouTube videos. I totally love them. Thank you for being so bold where most people and go where most people won't go. Thank you, Linda. God bless you. That's what, I, that's what we do. We say things that churches won't talk about, pastors won't talk about, and we bring up topics that people need to hear, especially the body of Christ. Um, I, uh, Terry said, I just found your message in spam folder. I'm, I'm overjoyed in finding it. Like the widow who found her lost coin, I want to thank you so much for your faithfulness in your ministry. Thank you for praying for me and for my family. I will keep you and the family lifted up as well. Thank you so much. Maureen says, I'm an activity director at a nursing home. I was reported to the state for praying with my residents. I was reported for laying hands on people as well. I was reported by one of my employees who was supposedly a Christian. I stated my case that I always asked for permission before I prayed for someone. I did receive a warning. I still have my job because I know the Lord wants me there. I will continue his work. Maureen, you just keep praying and you keep laying hands on because I tell you, the evil one doesn't want you to do that, but God ordains it and he also blesses you when you move forth, especially in boldness. Um, one more praise. I've struggled with all my adult life with my weight uh, and had on, on and off success. My biggest op obstacle was the fact that I could take it off, but my mindset wasn't there where I had the, the ability or thought process to make the lifestyle change. I finally did. And I had an awe moment over the last few moments to where I realized I had to make some changes. Okay. I wasn't taking care of the temple of God that God gave me. I've repented. I am moving forward with new attitude and a new war plan. I cannot let the enemy take me down, talk to me and talk me into eating anymore. Some things that I don't want to eat and cause me damage. Uh, praise God uh, for you, for your channel. Um, there's some, listen, I've got so many prayer requests here that 
Um, I'm going to post them. Shanita, we need to post them up on the website so we can just put the praise reports up there so people know. Do we have any of the praise reports? Uh, yes, we sure do. And I want to thank the Lord for all the people who gave tonight. We yes. really, really thank, appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone who's been praying and giving. I appreciate it. Thank you. Someone just gave $100. God bless you. And like I said, all this money goes to the ministry. It goes to making a blast evangelist. And this is what we do. We have to, folks. We can't just sit and gripe about Netflix. We've got to have a solution, okay? And that's what Last Evangelist is. That's what davidheavener.tv is. Uh, okay, so we have room for one or two praise reports. Well, Pastor Mike is having a birthday this week. Pastor Mike, happy birthday, brother. 29. Cheryl says, my son is healing from the shooting. Jesus has given him another chance at salvation. Praise the Lord. So he was shot and he's healing. Okay. Praying Lynn for you. Lynn says, thank you for your prayers requested three Mondays ago. An amazing breakthrough in my marriage. I praise God daily for years for this outcome. Wow. I was shown there were occult books left behind in my son's bedroom. Once I burned those books, prayed in the spirit, called out the demonic spirits and cleansed the house, praising God instantly. The atmosphere in me and my home was changed. Oh, wow. Awesome. Awesome. Do we have any prayer requests? We're going to move into prayer requests now because we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. Don having suicidal okay. thoughts. Okay. Don having suicidal thoughts. I want to pray for Brent. I hurt my ankle. It's weak. I'm not healing as expected. We're going to pray that into a complete healing tonight. Um, other Sandy, Pamela, Terry, Cynthia, James, Kay, um, Dana's recovery from surgery, um, Jordan's health issues, Mike, Barb, Brittany, Pamela, um, Jamie, uh, Calvin, Lynn, the same pain now six years, uh, Cindy making life and death decisions for her dad today. Mm. And um, I think there are more, but just email them so we can get them out to our prayer warriors. Okay, email me all your prayer requests, everybody. Um, as each week goes by, we have more and more prayer requests. When you email me, I personally pray for you. I send you back a personal email. It comes from me. It doesn't come from anybody else. So if you, if you do get something back, it is from me. Um, each and every person that donates, I see your name. I pray for you. I pray over you. Um, so this is a one-on-one -on -one ministry. I never want to get to the point where I don't know who you are and I can't do my best to help you because that's why I'm here. Love you. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Tonight, you've given us information. And Father, you've been gracious enough to show us the truth of how our children are being affected. Not only that, but how we have been affected through the generations. And Father, I want to tell you tonight and give you all the glory of how you have given us this information and we don't deserve it. We are your children, but I'm so humbled that you would r rise us above to a new level of understanding now, Father, now that you've given us this information, I'm asking that you give us the boldness to carry it forth to the people. To not worry about offending people, but me, be more concerned about defending you, Father. That we defend you at the risk of offending people. Because your character is the most important thing to us. We love you, and we're here for you. I thank you for each and every, every gatherer out there. I pray a special anointing blessing over them, the prayer warriors, the people that have stepped up to the plate and donated hard-earned money. It's your money, God. This is your project. This is your ministry. This is your channel, your station. I want to thank you, Father, that you're healing right now. You've, there's gatherers out there that are very ill. I'm thanking, for the, thanking you for this healing that you're performing right now, this miracle. 
there's a family out there that's in shambles. I don't know if it's financial. I'm not sure if there's drugs involved, but it's a family that's being divided. And you're now bringing that family together. You're now bestowing upon that parent's mind that they need to open that Bible and start reading scripture to their children. There's someone out there that has a mother or a father in a nursing home, and they're struggling with that. I'm asking for a restoration and for an anointing. I'm praying for that child out there right now that's in danger of being abused. That that abuser cannot touch that child. And Father, I'm asking that any evil that's on the Netflix channel, any channel, that it be shut down. I believe you've given us the power and you've given us the permission to ask you to shut it down. And last but not least, Lord, I want to thank the ones out there that have come to the forefront and have answered the call, and they've been persecuted. We have many gatherers here, Lord, that have been persecuted because of you. They've been fired. They've lost their family. They're lonely because they chose you over the world. Father, we're a group of people that are being persecuted. I'm asking right now for a special favor on our gatherers who have been persecuted. I'm asking if you'll comfort them right now. I'm asking if you will anoint them. I'm asking, Lord, if you will bless them. They've lost income. I'm asking that you will restore that. I'm asking, Father, that you will restore their relationships with their family. Supernaturally, it's happening right now. All over, there's families right now. We're going to get calls from family members wanting to get back together. There's someone listening to me that's older and and, and they're lonely. It's It's a woman and you're very lonely and you're in a dark spot. And God's saying that he's with you and he's comforting you. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Love you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. It's good to be with you. Please, if you would. Pray for the ministry. We want to pray for you. Send me your email request, your prayer request, your praise reports to david at davidhavener.com. Please go to lastevangelist.com. You can become a fundraiser. It's Any amount of money that you donate is not too little, I promise you. Um, text the word evangelist to 71777. Let's raise the rest of this money. Let's give Netflix the devil a run for their money, okay? Matter of fact, let's put them out of business. Um, I love you all. Appreciate you all. Just remember that you've never really lived until you found something worth dying for. That's the truth. God bless you. See you next Monday. Love you.